What is up guys? I'm Daddy Gamer Fred and welcome back to another Pokemon the Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee news update video or discussion video. In today's video, we're going to be going over this Japanese YouTuber that got exclusive access to go to the Pokemon Company headquarters where they're developing the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games, actually working on it. And he got hands on time playing with the games and actually revealed a couple of new things that I wanted to go over and share with you got first and foremost the video link for this video if you want to check it out for yourself is going to be in the description so you can just pop over check out his channel sub to it and also check out the video do note that this whole video is in Japanese so currently watching this there isn't no English translation come on game explain get on it but as of right now I'm just working with what's actually shown in the video and not actually what they're talking about I'm pretty sure there's more information to be found there so throughout the video there is multiple stuff one in particular that was pointed out by pixel par on Twitter and actually to be honest that's how actually how I found this video on one of the computer screens while they were working on Pikachu you can see the code name Bioga Bioga whatever the whale that pixel par was talking about way before the let's go games got announced you could see the code name on the computer and also on the top tab of the computer to show that they're actually working on that that code name game and that's pretty cool that's actually hardcore concrete confirmation that that's the code name for the let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee game so pixel part was right something we also get and I believe we haven't seen is this Eevee actually wearing a bucket as a hat yes a bucket as a hat I'm, I'm curious to see how Eevee is gonna be able to run off your shoulders while wearing this if this is just for a cutscene or maybe this is something that we can actually put on Eevee as a clothing item. I'm kind of curious about this and how it's actually going to work, but let me know what you think of this bucket in the comment section below. And then we also get a glimpse of the encounter of Professor Oak outside of Pallet Town in the grass, well, in the patch of grass right in front of Pallet Town, and Pikachu comes out running around, and then you actually have to capture that Pikachu. It's kind of the tutorial on how to catch Pokemon in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and let's go Eevee which kind of confirms the question were we gonna capture Pikachu are we gonna pick the starters at the beginning of the game it's kind of clear cut that we don't get to pick the starters at the beginning of the game that Pikachu is gonna be our starter Pokemon that we're gonna capture it just like in Pokemon yellow and then go into Professor Oak's lab and actually choose Pikachu and then you get to name the Pikachu give it a nickname inside of Professor Oak's lab as well also one thing I want to kind of point out is that obviously in the Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. You're probably going to do this for Eevee, so that is to be expected. And then we also get a glimpse of Pikachu actually not on your shoulder, but running behind you like a buddy Pokemon. Now we do know that you can have Pikachu on your shoulder and a second Pokemon running behind you, and that's actually confirmed later on as well, but it's pretty cool to see that right out the gate, Pikachu is just not going to be on your shoulder, that there is a animation for the Pokemon trainer to be running around without Pikachu but then also to have Pikachu behind them running around like a regular Pokemon and then we get a better look of route one and how it actually looks compared to the Pokemon original yellow version red blue counterparts which is pretty cool we get to see the Pokemon running around in the wild we get to see Pidgey Rattata nothing new exactly on the route one and any new Pokemon potentially being shown it just looks kind of the same to if you ask me it looks the same that one NPC is still there so that's pretty normal and then we get to see Viridian City and to me this is like the biggest reveal of this video of new information that we see inside of Pokemon let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee similar stuff that we've seen in a Pokemon yellow blue red is that guy that's on the other side of the water you could still see 
him there. You see tons of other NPCs sitting around in benches and stuff like that. Obviously, they didn't have that in the original games. But to me, the biggest reveal that is shown inside of Viridian City is that you can see the Team Rocket members in the middle of the road. You see Jesse, James, and Meowth. What it looks like to me, blocking the road because you actually, the, the guy playing, the YouTuber playing, I don't know if he was told just not to interact with them, but he doesn't interact with them. He actually heads back to Pallet Town in this shot. And maybe, just maybe, that's what he had to do. Like like in the original games, you have to go to the Pokemon and then pick up something for Professor Oak. Maybe that's what he's doing in this quick segment right here. But uh, we are unable to actually tell. And if you do read Japan, if you do read Japanese, let me know in the comment section below if you can translate what's actually going on. But it is interesting that they chose to go with Jesse James blocking the road and not the old man blocking the road, teaching you how to catch Pokemon. It's kind of obvious that we're going to learn how to catch Pokemon very early on in the game with you catching that first Pikachu and then running through Route 1, already obtaining Pokeballs and being able to catch Pokemon and enter them into your Pokedex. So that is kind of interesting. I wonder if they are just blocking your road or if that was something that they were going to introduce themselves in the story, maybe there. Who knows? Let me know what you think of that in the comment section below. To me, that is, is, is oh my god, I can't wait for this game. And then we get the in-game cinematic with Pikachu running on your shoulder. And then from here on out, actually, Pikachu is going to be on your shoulder rather than running behind you. So maybe this is the start of Pikachu actually doing that. Then your rival jumps in and then actually jumps into a battle with you guys, which I think is pretty cool. So you do get that classic rival battle inside of Professor Oak's lab, which I thought you weren't going to get it because he's like your friendly rival in this game. But he looks pretty evil in that laugh, I can tell you that. But I'm very interested on how close these games are going to resemble those Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow games as it is a kind of quote unquote remake. What's kind of funny is that he knocks out this Eevee in one shot, which is like, oh my God, oh my my god this game is gonna be kind of easy from the looks of it but it being your first player battle i could understand how and why it would be easy one thing i do want to take note about professor oak's lab is that after your rival runs out you can see an extra pokeball sitting on professor oak's desk as well as a glimpse of more than a few i can count from my eye it looks like six pokemon on the back corner the left back corner you could kind of see it in this shot there there is obviously the, the YouTuber's cam in the way, so you can't see it 100%, but you can make out the Pokeballs. And I wonder, what are these? Is these Professor Oak's Pokeballs? I mean, to me, that means we're potentially going to be able to battle Professor Oak because he has his Pokemon there. I wonder if that's his Pokemon or if that's just him testing out Pokeballs. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think these are? And then we get a hands-on of the YouTuber actually petting Pikachu in the whatever mode this is going to actually be called in this game. But you can see him using the Joy-Con, the one Joy-Con that he's using throughout this whole playthrough to actually pet Pikachu on the forehead and stuff like that by just using it as a pointer and pointing. I think this is pretty cool. I kind of hope we can use the analog stick as well because I'm not too fond of just always using the Joy-Con as a pointer. It's not the best thing. We don't have the Wii sensor bar, so it's not as accurate as it was in the past. I'm just hoping they give us options as far as using the analog stick and not just always using a pointer. And then it skips over to Brock's gym. It doesn't show us anything from the inside of Viridian City Forest. And then it shows us the battle of him and Brock. And then to no one's surprise, he just spams double kick with Pikachu and then knocks out Geodude and knocks out Onyx. To me, this shows that this game is going to probably be a walk in in the park when it comes to difficulty. Hopefully there is a difficulty spike at the tail end of the game because, oh my God, these battles are just like a walk in the park for him and actually contain little to no challenge. I really do hope that it does get a little difficult so it won't be as easy as it shows. And then lastly, he shows the box art, which we kind of know, but he actually has them in a physical form. He has the Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee and they look amazing. He doesn't show the back covers, for whatever reason, but he does have them in hand and I think they're pretty cool. And that's going to be it for the video breakdown, guys. Let me know in the comment section 
Malo. What do you think about everything that we've seen? Do you think we're actually going to be battling Professor Oak? Why do you think Jesse and James are going to be in Viridian City? Do you think they're just blocking the road and we actually have no interaction with them there? Or do you think there's going to be a cinematic or a cutscene showing us interact with them in Viridian City? And what are your thoughts on us actually catching Pikachu and not actually getting another starter in the beginning of the game? I was actually holding out hope for us potentially getting like a Charmander in the, in the beginning of the game as well. We've seen in the E3 demo that the person playing on the save file had a Pikachu, but then also had a Bulbasaur core, a Charmander core, and a Squirtle core. And with the Pokemon gym requirements at Brock's gym in Pewter City, we've seen that you could potentially have a water Pokemon on your team because it is a requirement to have. Now we did see water inside of Viridian City with that patch of water blocking that one guy that's standing in Viridian City or whatever that gives you the TM, I believe Dream Eater. I could be wrong about that. Let me know in the comment section below. But we see that patch of water. So potentially you can, I would hope, you'll be able to fish early on in the game and catch a Magikarp at least in that patch of water. But let me know your thoughts on everything that we've seen and went over from this video in the comment section below. Like always, guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred on Instagram and Twitter. And you guys can bring the conversation there. I'm the American gamer in Switzerland right here on YouTube. And yes, I'm going to be doing a ton of videos just like this one. So if you enjoy, please hit that subscribe button. Also, hit the like button. It does help me out a ton as far as growing the channel is concerned. Ring the bell if you want to be notified on the next time I drop a video. Peace. I'm going to see you guys on the next one.